I'm Mark. I'm Jake. I'm at number is fifty-seven. I'm a junior. The topic I'm going to read today is the fight against sex slaves. I'm talking here about the worst form of human rights violation, the third largest organization in crime, a ten billion industry. I'm talking to you about modern day slavery. I can tell you the story of these three children. Prom, Prania, Shahin, and and ya angel. Fahina's mother was a woman in prostitution, a prostitute person. She got inflicted with HIV, and towards the end of her life, when she was in the final stage of AIDS, AIDS, she could not、uh, prostitute. So she sold her four-year-old Fahina <coughs> to a broker. By the time we got the information, we reached there. Pranita was already raped by three men. Shahin's background, I don't even know. He found her in the railway track, raped by many, many men. I don't know many, but the indication of that on her body was that her in- intestinal was outside her body. When and when we took her to the hospital, we needled thirty-two stitch to put her back her intestine into her body. We still don't know how、uh, who who her parents are, who she is, or that we know of that hundreds of men had used her brutally. And and he lost father a drunk card, so his child for pornograph. You're seeing here image of three year, four year old, and five year old children who have been tracked for commercial sexual exploitation in this country. And、across the globe, hundreds and thousands of children, as young as three, as young as four, are sold into sex slavery. But that's not the only purpose they, that they are human beings are sold for. They are sold in the name of adoption. They are sold in the name of <coughs> organ trades. They are sold in the name of forced labor. Camel joking, anything, every, everything. I work on the issue of commercial sexual exploitation, and I tell you stories from here. My own journey to work with these children started as a teenager. I was 15 when I was gang raped by eight men. I don't remember the rape part so of it so much as the anger part of it. Yes, there were eight men who defiled me, raped me, but that didn't go into my consciousness. I never felt like a victim, then or now. But what lingered from then till now, I am forty today. Is this huge outrage, outrageous anger? Two years, I was ostracized. I was、uh, stigmatized. I was isolated because I was a victim, and that's what we do to all tragic survivors. We as social society, we have. PhDs in victimizing a victim right from the age of fifteen. When I started looking around me, I started seeing hundreds and thousands of women and children who are left in sexual slavery, like part, like practice, <clears throat> and have absolutely no recipe,、uh, respite because we don't allow them to come in. Where do their journey begin? Most of them come from very optionless family, not just poor. You have even the middle class sometimes getting tra-、um, tracked. I had this IS officer daughter who is fourteen years ago studying in high <coughs> standard, who was raped, chatting with one individual, and ran away from home because she wanted to become a. A、uh, heroine who was trafficked. Traf- 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 I have hundreds and thousands of stories of very, very well-to-do families and children from well-to-do families who are getting trafficked. <laughs> These people are deci-、uh, decided, forced. Ninety-nine point nine percent of them. Resist being induced into positions. Some pay the price for it. They're killed. We don't even hear about them. They are vi- voiceless, <clears throat> unclear, nameless people. 
but the rest who scumbed into it go through everyday torture because the men who come to them are not men who want to make you your girlfriends or who want you to have a family with you. These are men who buy you for an hour for a day and use you for you. Which of the girls that I have rescued? I have rescued more than 3,020 3,200 girls. Each of them tell me one story in common. A pause. One story about one man at least putting chili, chili powder in her vagina. One of men taking a cigarette and burning her. One man whipping her. We are living among those men. They are our brothers, fathers, uncles, cousins all around us. And we are silent about them. They think it was easy money. We think it is shortcut. We think the person likes to do what she's doing. But the extra problems that she gets is various inf infections, sexual transmission, transmitted infections, HIV, AIDS, um, syphilis, gonorrhea, you name it, substance abuse, drug, everything under the sun. And one day she gives up on you and me because we have no option for her. And therefore she started normalizing this exhibition. She believes, yes, this is it. This is my destiny is about. And this is normal to get raped by 100 men a day. And it is abnormal to live in a shelter. It's abnormal to get habilized. And it is that context that I would. It's in that context that I rescue children. I rescue children as young as 3 years. And I have rescued women as old as 40 years. I rescued them. One of the biggest challenges I had was there was where I began. Because I had lots of them who were already HIV infected. One third of the people I rescued are HIV positive. And therefore, my challenge was to understand how can I get out of the power from this pain. And for me, I was greatly experienced understanding my own self, understanding my own pain, my own isolation, was the greatest teacher. Because what we did with these girls is to understand their potential. You see a girl here who is trained as a welder. She works for a very big company, a workshop in um, Hyderabad, making furniture. She earned about she earned around twelve thousand rupees. She is an uh, legit girl, trained skill as a wielder. Why wielding and why not why not computering? We felt one of the things that these girls had is immense amount of courage. I did not have any mm, ardas inside their body. He jobs inside themselves. They've crossed the barrier of it, and therefore they could fight in a male-dominated world very easily and not feel shy about it. We have trained girls as carpenters and mansions, and as security guard, as a cab driver, and each of them are <laughs> excelling in their chosen field. Gaining confidence, restoring dignity, and build hopes in your own lives. These girls are also working in big construction companies like Ren Key Constructions as mansions, full time mansions. What has been my challenge? My challenge has not been the traf uh, trafficker who beat me up. I've been beaten up more than 14 times in my life. I can hear from my right ear. I've lost a staff of mine who was murdered while on a rescue. My biggest challenge is, uh, is society. It's you and me. My biggest challenge is your blocks to accept these victims as our own. A very supportive friend of mine, a well wiser of mine, used to give me every month 2,000 rupees for vegetables. When her mother fell sick, she said, 
So Nisa, you have so much contacts. Can you get somebody in my house to work so that she can look after my mother? And there is a long pause, and then she says, "Not one of our girls." It's very fashionable to talk about human trafficking. In this fantastic AC hall, it's very nice for discussion, this discourse, making films and everything. But it is not nice to bring them to our houses. It's not nice to give them employment, employment in our factories, in our companies. It's not nice for our children to study with their children. Here it ends. That's my biggest challenge. If I'm here today, I'm not here. I'm here not only as Shantia Krishan. I'm here as a voice of the victim and survivor of human trafficking. They need your compassion. They need your empathy. They need much more than anything else. Your acceptance. Many times when I talk to people, I keep telling them one thing: Don't tell me. Hundreds ways out. You cannot respond to this problem. Can you buy your mind for that one way that you can respond to the problem? And that's what I'm here for: asking for your support, demanding for your support, requesting for your support. Can you break your culture of silence? Can you speak to at least two person about this story? Tell them this story. Convince them to tell the story about another two persons. I'm not asking you how、um, you all to become Mahatma Gandhi's or Martin Luther King's or Meta Pet Cars or something like that. I'm asking you. In your limited world, can you open your minds? Can you open your hearts? Can you just encompass these people too? Because they are also a part of us. They are also a part of this world. I'm asking you, all these children whose face you see, they are no more. They died of AIDS last year. I'm asking you to help them accept as human beings, not as um. Philanthropy, not as charity, but as human beings who deserve all our support. I'm asking you this because no children, no human being, deserve what these children have gone through. Thank you. Applause.